All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you a few different ways we can export some data from Google Sheets to a CSV file. So let's start with something basic. So this is a worksheet. See, I have this layout where I have all the column headers on top and the data basically goes like this all the way. If we just look what happens here, basically about 500 lines here and a few lines blank. So if we just go ahead and go to file, go to download, there is an option here to do comma separated values, a CSV file. And as you can see, that's gonna get us the current sheet. Something that CSVs are gonna be able to do, they're only gonna be able to get the current sheet because uh, it's a text file. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it's downloading the file now, so I'm gonna hit save. Let's go ahead and open that in Excel and see what it looks like. As you can see, it was exported and we have our CSV open. Now that's a CSV, all good. I wanna check what happened with this extra columns and extra rows we have in a spreadsheet. And it's hard to tell if you're working with this in Excel format. So I'm gonna close this. I want to see what happened with this empty columns and empty rows in the actual CSV file. And for that, I'm gonna open that CSV in a text editor. So there's this file in a text editor. I will probably have to zoom in a little bit here. So what's happening here, if we look here all the way to the right, there are no extra columns. So those extra blank columns did not register as columns. That's good news. Now let's also check the bottom and see what's going on. So as you can see, the blank rows below also didn't get picked up. So that's good news. So what if we have to export this without the headers? So in this case, it basically exported it, including the headers. Now to do something like that, we need to do a little bit of trickery. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this link and I'm gonna show you that in a separate tab here, I guess. So I can zoom in as I do this. So I'm gonna paste that link in here. So this is the link to my worksheet. So I'm gonna go all the way up to this slash edit and remove this edit part. And I'm gonna replace that with export. So in here, we can have some export options. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a question mark. And after this, we can pass some parameters to this particular endpoint of export. And I'm gonna do the format and make it equal to CSV. So this is the modification I did to my link. Now let's open this in a browser. So I'm gonna copy this, open a new browser window and paste it right in here. So as you can see, it doesn't actually open it. What it does, it starts the download. So if I hit okay, it's gonna start downloading that file. And if I just go ahead and open that again to see what's going on with it, it's basically an export, but you can see there's a bunch of extra columns here that we didn't have before. And the reason for that is because this is not exporting this tab that we were on. What it's doing, it's exporting the first tab of the file, which is this one that's called database. And if I go here, there are a lot more columns here going to the right compared to this data one. Now I wanted that to export the data one, not this database. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to that link and I'm gonna do a little modification here. So see, after this question mark format equals CSV, we have to explain which worksheet we're trying to actually export. Now to do this, we need to get the ID of that worksheet. And to find out what the ID is for that worksheet, I'm gonna go to that worksheet, see this data one. And if I do that, if you look in this URL, see there is this, well, let me just copy this one too. And I'm gonna place it in here so you can see it. So if you look in this URL, see after the added, there's this pound key and there's this GID equals this number. So that GID refers to the ID of that worksheet, the actual tab, and that's what we need. So I'm gonna grab that part that says GID equals that number, copy it, hit escape, go back to my first link, and after this format equals CSV, I'm gonna add an ampersand and paste 
that GID equals to that worksheet ID. Let's get rid of this. Now, let me try to open this link in the browser so we can see what happens. So I'm going to copy this. Do remember that these links you can only open if you're logged in. So if you try to open it when you're not logged in, it's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and open a tab and paste this right in here. And as you can see, we got the download prompt. Now I'm going to try to open that file. So now if you look here, see we got just the columns from that worksheet because we're pointing to the right worksheet now. So that's good. Now the next step we want to do here, we want to make sure we don't include our headers in this export. So we can do that by adding another parameter to this link. Now, before I add the parameter, let's just go check and see what the range is. So if I go to this data one, see the range that I need exported, I don't want the headers. So I'm going to start from A2 and go all the way through I, whichever the bottom cell is, right? All the way down. So I'm going to do A2 through I, whichever cell it is. So to do that, again, I'm going to go back to this. And after all of this, we're going to add another ampersand and add range parameter to this and make it equal to A2 colon I. So if you wanted to go A2 through I, let's say 20, let me do that. You would type this. And now if I go ahead and grab this link, copy it and open it in a browser window, see it downloads the file. Let's just go take a look. So now if you look here, see I got starting from that A2 and we only got that 19 rows or however many that is. So we just exported that particular range by providing the range. Now if you want this to just basically go all the way down instead of stopping at a particular number, what you could do, you could just go in here and remove this 20 out of here. So from A2 through I, basically that means all the way down in I column. And now if I grab this link, copy it and open it in a browser, that's our file that was downloaded. See headers are not here because we're starting from A2, but this should pretty much just go all the way down and see it still doesn't include any blanks below because it doesn't include the blank rows. So that basically just gets you the whole data from your start point all the way down. So this allows you to, for example, if your worksheet was like this and you're trying to export the data, now, if I just go ahead and export this in a regular way by going under file, download as, and do a CSV file. Now that CSV file is looking like this. See, it has that blank column in front of it. It has all this other stuff on top of it. So I don't want that in my export. So if I wanted my export to include the actual data, I could use that link format to do this. So what we need to do this, we need the ID of the worksheet as usual, which we can get right here on top. So I'm going to copy that. And then we can basically just create a link out of this. So again, I'll just create it on this other tab. So mostly it's going to be the same here, only this GID is going to be different. So I'm just going to replace it with a new worksheet ID and the range, we need to go and check what the range is. So I'm going to go back to that new data tab. So if we wanted to include the headers, then we need to start from this B4 going all the way through J, well, all the way down. So B4 through J, that's what I'm going to do. And let's copy this link and open it in a browser. So here it is opened in Excel. As you can see, now we actually grab the data without all the other unnecessary stuff that was on top of it or to the left. And again, just to verify there are no empty rows below that, let's just open this and scroll the way down in the text format. As you can see, it's just the data. So at this point, we could just make a link out of that link that we just made and put it someplace for us to click on, hopefully. So I'm going to copy this, go back to well, I'm going to put that right in here on top. Maybe we'll have like a download link and I'm going to do this using, well, you could just make a hyperlink here and insert a link like this, right click, insert link. And here you would just paste the link 
And here you would just name it. We could just say export to CSV. Press apply. There we go. So now we have this hyperlink. So we should be able to just open that. And see, as I click on it, that basically starts downloading that file. And if I hit OK, here is our export. So we just created our own export button that exports the tab and the range we need out of it without actually exporting the whole thing. Now let's take this to another level. So let's try to export something like this. So let's say we have this invoice where we're entering some line items here and we want to just export the line items themselves or maybe the headers and the line items, whichever one, to a CSV export, but we don't want to include this stuff or this stuff above it in our CSV file. We just want the items. And this area could potentially change by us adding more rows here or removing rows, something like this. So if the area was the same all the time, then this would be a pretty simple thing to do, similar to the first example that I just did. So we would just basically do that, see, get the ID of this worksheet again, go back to this link format that I was doing and update that to the right ID. So I'm just gonna grab this number and replace it in here. And we also need to update the range because this one is from B4 through J. Now this new thing we have is from B18 through F22. So that would be our basically link to get that download. However, we want to make this a little better by trying to figure out what's the last line that needs to be exported. So right now, see the last line is 22, but that could change if somebody goes in here and adds another line. So we wanna know, okay, so you know what? This should have been now line 24, starting from 18. Because if we do this the way we did it before by dropping the end reference, it would also include all of this stuff below, which we don't need. So we need somehow reference to the last line and we need to get that in a good way so that we know that's actually the correct line. So to do that, I'm gonna basically use this line below to do that. So for example, if I just go here and do, let's just find an empty cell someplace in here. So this should be good. I'm gonna do equals offset. And then I'm gonna click on this line right below the last line, comma. And then I'm gonna do row offset. So I want right above that subtotal line. So I'm gonna do negative one. And I'm gonna do zero to stay in the same column. If you want to learn more about offset function and how it works, I have a video on that. But for right now, this will basically point to just this cell right above here because there's nothing in here, our cells shows nothing. But for example, if I just go here and type some stuff, see now it basically links to this because we said one up from here. But I don't really want to link to the number. I just want to know which row this is. So that should be row 24. And to do that, I'm just gonna go and grab all of this and put it inside of a function row like this. And you should be able to see already, it's giving us 24. So right now, see, it's telling me 24. And if I remove this now, because I don't need that, it's still gonna be 24. But the nice thing about this, if I go ahead and delete a row, it's gonna update. If I add a row, it's gonna update. Even if I add one over here below, it's still gonna update because we said one up from this. And now we have a dynamic way for us to get the actual row number. So at this point, we want to incorporate this inside of our link. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that link someplace in here. Let me just delete these extra lines because we don't need them. I was just doing this for us to see how this is gonna work. Now I wanna add that download link someplace here. So maybe we'll just add it right in here. Let me go grab the 
hyperlink we created. I'm gonna hit escape after I copy that, go back to this new tab. Now I want to add a link, but I cannot do this insert link anymore because this is going to just ask me for the link itself. And I want this link to be built dynamically. So I'm gonna escape that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do equals and use this function hyperlink. So this C accepts a URL as a string. So for now, I'm just gonna do a quotation, paste that link I just made in quotes like this, comma. And the second argument is basically the text for the user. So again, in quotations, I'm just gonna say export CSV or something, whatever you want it to say. You could just say download or whatever. And that should now just add this link here that we should be able to just click on and that should basically just open that download link. The problem right now, it's hard coded in the formula right here to go to the 22nd row. Now I want that to update automatically. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this row function without the equal sign. Remove that out of here because we don't need it over there. Go back to this hyperlink. So I'm gonna click and do arrow down to get to it and then go in here, remove that 22 out of this link and concatenate with an ampersand that function with row and offset that gives me the last row number. So I'm saying let's start from B18 and go all the way through F, whatever that number ends up being. So if I hit enter right now, that should still have the export. So let's just go ahead and download this to see what it looks like. As you can see, as you would expect, you get the three items we have. So if you wanted to also include this, you would start from 17th row instead of from 18th. But with this setup, if I just go and add a few items here, if I just go ahead and click on that same download button, As you can see, we just got the items. So it automatically figured out that it needs to go to line 24 and grabbed all this data and export it to a CSV file. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.